So um, chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension is a potential complication after acute pulmonary embolism. Um, and it should be the expectation that patients after acute pulmonary embolism return to baseline. Uh, if they still have ongoing dyspnea after six months of anticoagulation, we should be screening these patients for chronic thromboembolic disease with a ventilation perfusion scan and then working them up with a uh, CT pulmonary angiogram and then potentially right heart cath and conventional angiogram to determine operability. Um, this disease is potentially curable with surgery. Um, so uh, upwards of 90% of the patients who undergo a pulmonary thromboendarterectomy, the surgical cure for, for uh, chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, have normal hemodynamics after the surgery. So um, if we make the diagnosis, the patient should be referred to a center who uh, specializes in pulmonary thromboendarterectomy and they should be uh, assessed for operability. The good news is that a number of patients who are deemed inoperable now have several different options for um, therapies. Um, we have uh, uh, Rio Sigwad, um, the first FDA approved medication for inoperable CTEF um, that showed uh, benefit in uh, reduction in, in um, pulmonary vascular resistance and an increase in six minute walk distance in the CHEST-1 trial. And now we have emerging data for macetentin in the merit uh, trial that has recently been published. So uh, we have two um, emerging medical therapies for these patients. And now we also have balloon pulmonary angioplasty, which is an option for patients with distal disease that is not amenable to surgical resection. So um, having inoperable CTEF is, is um, uh, there are now treatment options that are available for these patients. Well, a quick summary of that uh, uh, session would be that uh, first is that most patients uh, with CTEF are not recognized. Um, but once they're recognized, they need to go a, under a, a, an appropriate assessment at a center that has extensive experience in chronic thermal walk pulmonary hypertension. And if even in those centers, we often refer for secondary opinion when we feel that they're inoperable. Because the difference uh, in outcome uh, for a patient who's operable and inoperable is rather is quite striking in terms of outcomes of functional status and mortality. There was a recent trial called MERIT, which looked at a drug called Masitantan, which has already previously been approved for the treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Um, that trial, the MERIT, um, is a randomized controlled trial which looked at a primary outcome of pulmonary vascular resistance, which was significantly reduced at the end of the 16-week trial. In addition, uh, the secondary endpoints of pro-BNP and uh, six-minute walk were met, showing a significant improvement over placebo. Additionally, in that trial, there were a fair number of patients who were on additional other forms of medical therapy, uh, which were primarily phosphodiesterase inhibitors, which suggests that uh, the drug may eventually, uh, if in, in demonstrated in trial, may have some benefit in combination therapy in this subset of patients uh, who have not been studied extensively. The takeaway from this session uh, that I would emphasize is that the VQ scan is crucial in evaluating patients who have shortness of breath after a pulmonary embolism. Um, it's uh, the preferred screening test for patients with chronic thromboembolic disease. And once that test is abnormal and you suspect chron either chronic thromboembolic disease or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, uh, consideration for a referral to an expert center uh, to assess these patients for operability or intervention is absolutely the way to go.